What's up guys? Welcome back to the DLB Daily and I'm so excited. We're bringing back the gym workouts. It's long overdue. It's just so fun. Now we get to, not that the dumbbell only or even the body weight, like weren't doing the job, but now we, we can combine all of them together. So we're gonna be doing some machines today. I'm excited. Are you guys excited? I'm excited. Let's go. <laughs> Guys, this is called a leg extension machine. You probably forgot what it looked like because we haven't used one in like three months. And <laughs> we're bringing it back. And not only are we using it once, they were using it twice for all that missed time because it's such a great machine. Uh, the first time we use it, we're using it as a warm up. Um, if you've been here with me for a while, then you will already know what the Jose Raymond 45s are. Uh, so we're going to be using this as a warm-up set, uh, warm-up sets. Uh, I want you to do two to three. If you feel good after two, you can move on to squats because we will have some more leg extensions towards the end of the workout. So Jose Raymond 45s, why are they called Jose? Who the heck is Jose Raymond? First of all, take a second, pause it, just Google Jose Raymond. Boston Mass. So, uh, when uh, my first pro show, so we both worked for MHP together, who became really, really good friends. And I always did my own training, my entire life, all the way up to going pro. So for my first pro show, I decided, hey, let's see what it's like to get a little help. So he did uh, help me with my diet and nutrition, and I would drive up there, drive to Boston and train with him. And his specialty is his legs. He's most well known for his grainy, gross, you can insert the YouTube clip here. It has like a bazillion views. Jose, I need to see them legs. So he drops pants. Holy fuck. And then I was like. And then people behind me were like. And Rob was like. And he was like. Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
and he'd like force me back down and be like, no, five more reps. And like, it's brutal. So 15 bottom, 15 top. You can also switch those, like maybe the next set, you can go 15 top, 15 bottom. And then it's five regular, five hold, five regular. And those are full range reps. So five regular, one, two, three, four, five. And then you'll go to holds, one, two, one, two, five hold, five regular. I'm gonna take a second and try to get through this. <laughs> Whoa, 45 reps, here we go. We're doing it live. I just was like, I don't know if 45 is gonna be too heavy or not. We're just gonna do it live, guys. <laughs> if I die, I die. That your quads are on fire we're now gonna squat so today is obviously a quad focused workout so everything is going to be hitting our quads so i wanted to kind of pre-exhaust get it a lot of blood in our quads and now it's going to make squatting not as great but in a good way uh so today is just simple uh four sets eight to ten reps at 60 to 65 percent so that 60 to 65 percent if you know your one rep max you're taking your first working set so all your warm-up sets don't count and it's going to take me probably three to four sets and you, you don't have to do eight to ten reps for each one to get to my working set weight so your first set is going to be 60 percent of Three, I'm definitely not at 315 right now. It's probably like 300, but I'll just say like 60% of 315 is what? I need my calculator. <laughs> calculator. So 315 times 0.6. So my first working set's gonna be somewhere like 185 to 190. Obviously like 189 is a weird number. So I could probably count my first working set at 185. And then I wanna try, since it's four sets, try to add a little bit of weight for each set. So whether that's two and a halfs on each side, fives on each side. If you feel good, if that 185 is like super simple and I got 10 reps, way easy. I'm gonna throw fives on each side. The next set, throw tens on each side. Go, you guys get it? Get your little calculator out. Beep, 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 boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you wish squatting was that fast. <laughs> I know that was just was like a really fast motion. That was, so I did the bar, quarters, 45, 
That was four warm-up sets. I didn't do all eight to 10 because I don't want to like wear myself out because this for eight to 10 reps is actually going to be kind of heavy. <sighs> huh. So a couple key things. If you noticed, uh, I think your approach is very vital. I do the same thing every single time. I, I mean, I can go through it. It's always this. Go under, one step, one step, make sure I'm all aligned. And then it's up, step back, step back, and then make sure my feet are good together. But I think it's good to always practice, like think of like a basketball player with foul shots. You always have the same technique. So I would like spin it, dribble, dribble, spin it, dribble, dribble, get set and they always do the same thing you should do that with your deadlift you should do that with your squat you should do that with your bench especially if you're going a little bit heavy obviously today is not super heavy it's more volume but i always approach the bar the same exact way so if you aren't if you never thought about that and you kind of just walk up and like nonchalant get get focus get your head right and always come to the bar the same exact way, whether there's 75 pounds on the bar or 315, you approach the bar the same exact way. That's my one tip. And then also figure out if you like high bar or low bar. For me, I do a low bar. Um, it helps my center of gravity. Uh, when it's high bar, it's all quads for me. I'm much stronger through my glutes and hamstrings. So I do a low bar, so it will sit right between my shoulder blade. I mean, normally you can see where the bar sits and I'll have like scrapes there. Uh, I just haven't been going heavy, so it hasn't been scraping me too bad. And then also shoes. Running shoes are not good. Um, anything with like flexibility. So I, these are like the Reebok like lifters. So there is a wedge. Um, they're super stiff. You're not really going to move around too much. And that wedge helps. If you ever, we use wedges a lot where I'm like, elevate your, uh, elevate your heels. It per, it actually, you get better range of motion. Um, and you're able to get a little bit lower. It just helps with alignment. Um, and then your foot will be completely flat. So if you're wearing regular shoes, um, try to find something like, uh, like chucks, which are at least flat, uh, flat shoes. Uh, I've even, when I'm on the road and I don't want to bring extra really heavy shoes, I'd rather squat like flat, like no shoes at all. So I'll do shoeless. All right, I should stop talking now. I should lift. I'm going to get my belt. <laughs> we're done squatting I know a lot of people ask like why do you do like a complete wardrobe change so these are my when I want to squat uh, these are actually like competition quality they're super tight super restrictive obviously they keep my knee super warm and like stays in line so you don't have like any of these like wobbly knees as the weight gets heavier I just want to protect my knees. Tomorrow, these knees will be 37 years old. Well, actually, by the time you see this video, they'll be 37 years old and five days. <laughs> so 
I just really, I played soccer my whole life. Not that I have bad knees, knock on wood, but I wanna keep them safe. So I actually like to wear knee sleeves the entire time. So when I squat, I wear like, qual uh, like competition grade with my like elevated heel uh, shoes. And then I switch, uh, these are from uh, Mark Bell slingshots. So these are more like athletic. You can do, you could run in them. They're not super restrictive, but they add a little bit of pressure for your knee to keep them nice and stable. Uh, and they also keep them nice and warm, which I think is probably the most important fact is keeping your ligaments and tendons nice and warm. And then I will also switch my shoe to maybe the, the like Metcons or these little, just flat CrossFit shoes. So again, I'm not a huge fan. Actually, I'm not a fan at all of wearing like tennis shoes or running shoes on, on leg day. You need something a little stiffer. Uh, so something nice and flat that you'll be level to the ground um, and something stiff that you're not gonna like move around too much. So these are just old nanos. These are the 05s, 05s. I mean, they're probably up to like 13s now, uh, but just old CrossFit uh, shoes, Reebok CrossFit or my Metcons. Those are my, usually my shoes of choice. So that's where the whole wardrobe change comes into play. Thank you for coming to Dale and Bailey's TED Talk. Oh, so next up is a movement that you have probably seen used many, many times, especially when we were doing like dumbbell only. Lunge, lunge, squat. I like this variation uh, a whole lot just because you're doing single leg, single leg and two legs at the same time. Uh, the only difference now is we're gonna use a barbell and we're gonna do a front rack. So it's gonna be a basically like a front squat, but you're doing a front rack, lunge, lunge, squat. The whole purpose of a front rack, um, one, it's quad day, so it's gonna emphasize more so on your quads than your hamstrings and glutes. And two, which I think is the most important part, is you're gonna have greater core stability because as the bar is here, you're ha you have more weight on the front of you. So it, you're gonna wanna fall this way, so what you have to do is tighten up your core, tighten up all the way around. So your core is not just your abs. Your core is basically the core, which is your lower back too. So your lower back's gonna be involved a lot and your abs are gonna be invo uh, involved a lot more. So the whole thing, obviously we're working our legs, but you're gonna develop more core stability that way and balance because we're going one leg at a time. Anytime you're doing single leg, and staggered, you're gonna work on balance. So balance, core stability, quads with a front rack. Triple threat. Yeah, triple threat, triple threat he says. Uh, so with a front rack, you can do it any way you want. As it gets heavier, I find that I actually do better this way, but we're doing 20 steps, so we're just gonna start with just the bar and then we can add from there. So the bar is gonna rest basically like if, if I had an Adam's apple, if you were a guy, it's gonna rest right basically on your collarbone and it doesn't always feel that great. That's why I don't really like front squats at all. But these are gonna be a little bit lighter. And then right on your front delts, if you can, your elbows, I don't have the most mobility that's why I switch, but your elbows want to be up as high as possible. And then you won't have to worry about, oh, I feel like I'm falling down. So that's why we're going to start light and then we'll move up from there. 20 steps, meaning, or 20 reps. So it's 20 per side and 20 squats because one rep is going to be lunge, lunge, squat. So just count the squats. So this is pro this won't be like our first working set, but just so you get the idea so that I'm not hyperventilating while trying to explain this. So also, if you have bad knees, I keep thinking of more things to say to you guys. I need to have line. 
There's no one here to give me lines, so I'm gonna keep making them. All right, if you have bad knees, I'm gonna do a helicopter. <laughs> you can do this standing still. Uh, I think the best way for anyone that has like weird knees, maybe you had a knee injury at some point, you guys are gonna do a reverse lunge. So you go reverse lunge, reverse lunge, squat. The reason for that, when you're moving forward, all that weight is coming forward and down all at the same time. So if lunges ever give you some kind of problem, you're gonna go backwards because you're not gonna get that forward momentum where all the forward momentum is coming at your kneecap. <laughs> so you need very, very, very strong lateralis, medialis, one of the laluses. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, medialis. Medialis is the middle, lateralis is the outside. I went to school, guys, for kinesiology. You wouldn't know it, but I did. <laughs> to another one of my favorite exercises. We've done this a lot on the dumbbell only and just because we have machines and stuff, we're gonna continue because it's one of my favorite exercises. So we're doing a heels elevated dumbbell squat, super set with 20 seconds. I know I used to say like 30 to 40 seconds and then I started doing it and uh, I was struggling so I bet you guys were struggling. So. We're gonna go 20 to 30 seconds. Start with 20, if you can keep going, go to 30. Uh, with a wide to narrow jumping squat. So first, let's talk about our goblet squat. Again, we're gonna elevate our heels. Now, if you wanna put, if you have squat shoes and you just wanna do it in squat shoes, perfect. Um, I obviously have this fancy dancy little wedge uh, from Prime for things like this, which is perfect. If you don't have a fancy dancy wedge from Prime, you're just gonna grab two plates, put your plates underneath your heels just so you have a little elevation. What's the purpose of that, Dana? Well, there's tons of purpose. Number one, uh, with your heels elevated, it is actually gonna take a little load off of your lumbar, off of your back, because you're gonna have to stay in more of an upright position. You can't bend down like this, otherwise you're gonna fall over, the weight's gonna fall, drop it on your toes. So you have to stay more upright, which then brings your core back into it, especially the erectors, erectors, I'm not even gonna say, spinae, I always say things wrong, guys. <laughs> Don't make fun of me. So your erectors, so you know that Christmas tree on the back when, you, when you're doing like a back double by? Erectors, they're awesome. So we're gonna tie those in, also tying your core in because anytime you're front loaded, you got to reverse it. So you got to hold in on your, your core, which is your lower back, erectors, and your abs. So core stability, once again. 
Also having heels elevated, you'll be able to go a little bit lower. It's gonna call on your vastus medialis, which is highly, highly good if you want stable knees. So that's this muscle that attaches here to your knee and runs up, medialis, lateralis. So we're gonna call on our medialis a little bit more and you'll be able to go, your knees are gonna go, believe it or not, in front of your toes. But I thought you weren't allowed to do that. Stop it, stop. Yes, have you ever heard of a sissy squat? Not for sissies, it's a real thing. So your knees going in front of your toes is actually not a bad thing. It actually helps develop the muscles around your knee to make it more safe and more stable for you. And believe it or not, I'm gonna demonstrate it here for you. You know when you walk up the stairs, like a simple movement of like, I wish I, that stair wasn't. When you walk up the stairs, guess where your knee normally is? In front of your toe. So should we, should we walk like this? If, what if it's a steep stair? You're gonna fall backwards. So yes, your knee is allowed to go in front of your damn toe. So stop saying it can't. I'm so sick of the hearing about, I thought your knee was up. Big babies. <sighs> and now I forget what my other, I had like three tips for you, it'll come to me. Lumbar, erectors, core stability, knee going in front of your toe, which is good. I don't know, something else probably. We'll figure it out. Goblet squat, you're gonna get, you could use a dumbbell, you can use a kettlebell. I'm just gonna use dumbbell. You're gonna hold right here where you, I'm gonna do about shoulder width. Heels are gonna be slightly in, toes are gonna be slightly out. If you wanna put add on a little more lateralis, feet together, toes straight. So yes, even though we're gonna be calling on that medialis because of the heels, if your feet are nice and straight, you can then work on that outer sweep. When your feet are close and straight, lateralis. But I'm gonna go just about like that, shoulder width, slightly out, goblet squat, going down as far as I can, and then up. Then we will go, so 10 to 12 reps there, and then we'll go right into a wide to narrow jump squat. So wide like a sumo, and then you're gonna jump in the middle, and then jump out. And it's okay, because sometimes I'll be a little bit more on my toes here, which guess what? Works your quads a little bit more when you're on your toes. So that's not really a bad thing. Here, my feet are flat, a little bit toes. And we'll go 20 seconds, nonstop, not 40. That was death. I'm sorry I did that to you guys. so much so we're coming back now we're going to do some single leg stuff uh, I know we did some single leg but this is strictly single leg so you'll see three movements um, two of them are just basically the same but different you're gonna start off on the leg extension you're gonna stay on the same leg for all three movements before you switch and we're only doing three rounds so normally we do like four or five sets of things this is just three so you do 
three all with the right leg, three all with the left leg, and then you can go right back to the right leg. So single leg extension. Um, again, how you wanna place your foot, uh, especially since it's single leg, if you wanna work more of that inner medialis, you're gonna point your toe out. If you wanna work more of your sweep, the lateralis, you're gonna point your toe in. If you want just overall good quad development, rectus femoris, and you're gonna kinda hit all of them, you're just not gonna be like more centrally located on that, you're gonna keep your feet straight. So whatever, you can even switch them for every set if you'd like. Um, I generally like to point my toe in just a little bit because for some reason, I have a severely overdeveloped medialis. That teardrop here, most girls like don't have that giant, I think it's probably from playing soccer. It's just big and overdeveloped. So I tend to like wanna work on the outside just for better development so it looks more symmetrical. So I'm probably gonna point my toe in just a little bit. So single leg extension, then we're gonna go to a one and a half rep Bulgarian squat. You can start with no weight, even if you'd like. I have no problem with that. Uh, because it's one and a half reps, it says six to eight reps, but six to eight is actually 12 to 16 reps. So start light, because you're adding a half rep in there. So if you add up all the half reps, there'll be whole reps in there. So one and a half rep Bulgarians, and then we're gonna drop all the weight and we're gonna do just 10, 10 to 12 jumping Bulgarians. Are you excited? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so what it's gonna look like, I'm just gonna, should I just run, uh, we'll go, we'll do a couple reps for each one. So again, I'm gonna point my toe in just a little bit and you'll see it's gonna work your whole quad but here, most of the weight is on that outer side. So we're just going up. I come down straight, and then at the top, I just turn just a little bit. So we're gonna go a nice 10 to 12, nothing too crazy. You're not like maxing out the machine. We're not gonna switch legs, so you immediately take your weight. We'll do it without for now. Since I'm working my right, left leg goes up. So dumbbells can just be right at your side. You're gonna come down, all the way down, up halfway, down, and then stand all the way up. Again, when you stand all the way up, that doesn't mean lock your leg out, just all the way up. And I always keep just a slight bend in my knee. So down, oops, down, halfway up, back down, all the way up. Up. Half, down, up, down, half, down, up. Then you'll drop your weight and you'll go right into just a little jump. You don't have to jump through the ceiling. Just get your foot just off the ground and use your, use your arms. So my arms come back as I jump up. And when I land, land basically in a squat, hands are forward. Up back. That will help you get up a little bit more. Those are gonna burn. Oh, all right. I'm gonna start with now my opposite leg for you guys. I need some tunes.
here, we have another machine, mysterious machine that we haven't seen for three months. And this is called a leg curl. We're gonna lay face down and curl the weight to our butt to work on our hamstrings and our glutes. <laughs> Sorry. So just because it's quad day, I like to throw a little bit of hamstrings in just at the very end. And when we get to hamstring and glute day, you can do the same with quads, just to, just to be like, hey, hey, hamstrings, we didn't forget you. We know you're back there. We'll see you in like three days for the real day. This is just a teaser. So super easy set here. We're doing leg extensions set with uh, leg press. Now, I know you guys are at public gyms and there's probably maybe even some protocols where you're only allowed to be on one machine at one time. Well, guess what? You just separate them. You just do four sets of the leg curl and then you'll go over, wipe, wipe all of your nastiness, coronavirus down, and then you'll go to the leg press and sit on someone else's coronavirus and leg press that. So it's okay if you can't do them at the same time. I only do it because one, it saves time, and two, I end up and I don't have to go as heavy on the leg press. So you don't have to throw a thousand plates on it. So I like to do things together to make that bigger compound movement harder so I don't have to use as much weight. So just separate them, not a big deal. So 10 to 12 reps, nothing fancy. Big thing here is just keeping your hips on the pad the entire time. So if your hips are coming up, like we always talk about, if you start doing this, where you can like see through it, you're going a little too heavy. So lighten it up and basic uh, easy way to not do that, which also makes the leg uh, curl a little bit harder, is elevate your chest. So I usually, even though this is a great, uh, great, great, great uh, leg curl machine, Sometimes I will, just to ensure that my hips stay down, I will elevate my chest and I'll be up more here, which makes the leg curl harder so you won't do as much weight, which then you won't have this. So, super easy. Oh, who was on it that has really long legs? My goodness. Look at me, shoes untied, falling apart guys at the seams back on it <laughs> nothing fancy uh just keep the reps super controlled uh same pace up same pace down i usually do like one two up one two down so instead of like huh, that's not good you don't want to do that so easy under control one two up squeeze for a second one two down one two up squeeze for a second one two down and then we will go over to the leg press, which, sweaty, there's my belly button. We'll leave that coronavirus there. We'll come back to it. We're going to transfer the coronavirus over here. And we're going to go feet up high because we did so much quad. So down here is more quad. Up here is more hamstrings. If you want a little bit of both, believe it or not, you can actually put your feet in the middle, even where the crease is. A lot of times that's where I will go. We're going to be a little bit higher, feet out, uh, pointed out slightly, maybe a little bit wider than you would normally do like a leg press. So we're, I'm about shoulder width, feet a little bit higher, toes pointed out. I didn't even warm up. I don't even know how much weight is on here. You're coming down. Oh my God, that's heavy. <laughs> To take some of that off and we're back with lighter weight i will we'll work up to that <laughs> just just trying to talk here so back to it feet about shoulder width apart toes slightly pointed out a little bit higher up and i want you to try to go as low as you possibly can look at where my knees are so this is what i normally see a leg press Ugh. This is how people do leg press. Look at how strong my kneecaps are. Isn't it amazing? So lighten up the damn weight guys. And I want you going all the way down. A lot of times I like my chest will stop me 
and it almost gives you that like little bounce up that these things do. So all the way down to your chest, back up. That's a rep. That's a rep, okay? None of these. That's for losers. With big kneecaps. <laughs> Four sets, 10 to 12 each. You don't need to go crazy heavy, full range, slow reps there, even slow reps there, but I want full range. I know I joke a lot. Pretty much joke this entire time. I don't think I say anything serious, but I'm serious about that. Don't do kneecap presses. Those are stupid. That's a wrap. It feels so good to be back in the gym with you guys. Back on some machines to kind of make it a little bit more varied than just dumbbells only. So hope you enjoyed this workout. If you're new to this and you're watching the DLB Daily for the first time, this is my daily workouts that I post to my YouTube, uh, to my YouTube channel, to my site, danalimbailey.com. If you like this video, make sure to like it shoot me a comment if you think this video sucked and i need to stop talking <laughs> i'll do that next time i'll have someone else talk i'll just demonstrate everything and they'll talk for me so like comment below and subscribe so that you always know when i post a video and if you enjoy these workouts and you want me to train you come to my site dalenbailey.com and join for the first seven days are free so try it out. No questions asked. You can quit. If you hate me, workouts are maybe too hard for you. It's a thing. It's a thing. You can quit at any time. See you guys. Thank you guys for watching.